hunting deer in the cold weather, deer in white tail season, any time of the season is critical to your success. This is why I talk about you can shoot more bucks sitting on the couch because if you only hunt the best weather and the cold weather, then your odds go up dramatically. I think 50 to one in some days where you're hunting a hot day, you do have 1% chance because the deer are still out in the woods. When you hunt a cold day, you're hunting right stand, meaning morning stand versus evening stand at the right time of year, then which is an easy choice. These are the winds, these are my morning stands, temperature's hot, temperature's cold, you go in, make a decision appropriately, and you shoot something. I think sometimes you have a 50% chance of shooting that buck that's in that area when that cold weather comes through versus 1%. This morning, it's still on October 19th? Yep, today? 20th. 20th. Right at that pre-rut time in uh, Southwest Wisconsin, Southeast Minnesota. We have a pretty good buck in Wisconsin that I've been watching for a couple of years. I want to shoot him, I'm hoping to. And he's in a certain area. I have three stands, depending on the wind, all set up, ready to go. Haven't disturbed the area. This morning was Dylan could come and film, could film in the stand. And uh, I'd like to go hunting. I just got back from Canada fishing. And um, it was 57, 58 degrees this morning. That's bad, that's warm. Because on Friday morning and Saturday morning, Dylan is gonna be in the 30s, low 40s. Yeah. Saturday morning is like 27 degrees or something like that. So those first temperatures this time of year um, are just, incredible you can't miss them so i can't go into that stand and potentially burn it out spook a few does in the area make it unwelcome for another deer a buck that i'm after that might not be moving around that much in this warmer temperature because when i go in on saturday morning or friday morning we get those temperature drops even sunday morning with lower temperatures even though nothing's happening my odds go up so dramatically that i can't afford to go in there this morning and mess that up no matter how much i want to go take a morning stand on a buck because he's probably just simply not moving because it's not cold enough. Don't let anyone tell you the cold weather doesn't push deer movement, buck movement during the daylight hours. A lot of times scientists will look at studies and they'll say, well, it didn't increase movement any, but it did increase movement more during the daylight versus nighttime. That's really critical. Maybe they still only moved 0.7 miles for the day for the 24 hour period, but half of that was in daylight versus all of it being after dark. And that's the difference cold weather makes. It might be the same movement, but they're moving more during daylight and that allows us to actually kill them which is very, very important. Cold weather equals dead bucks. What I mean by that, even just looking at last weekend, but I've been predicting weather patterns for 12, 15 years. I'd go online, stick my neck out, say this weekend's gonna be a great weekend to sit, and someone goes in, they're not planning on hunting otherwise, and they shoot a monster buck. And that happens often, and it's not just one buck, it's a collection of bucks. And so you'll say, you should be hunting this Thursday, Friday, it's a great cold front coming through, and a lot of bucks die. And that happened last year. Um, I shot Kermit weekend, there's, there's a property around here that some of the guys from Matthews use, and they shot two really nice bucks on that property, at least two, maybe three, during that same time period. So we're all shooting bucks within a day or two, and you could know that ahead of time, it's almost like a panic feeling. I gotta get out in the woods because bucks are gonna die. And this is my chance at one of those bucks in Kermit. You know, that's my, my top buck. I think it was October 29th, October 28th, right around there that I shot him. And it was because that cold front went through, I wasn't even taking that stand otherwise. So it's very important that you take advantage of these situations because you can predict these a week to 10 days out. That's why I developed the algorithm for my Outdoor Life article that I wrote for the November rut issue back in 2015. That's the way I hunted since the early 90s. I developed that algorithm, simple algorithm to me. It was out of 70 points, made uh, actual values based on weather influencers, number one being temperature change, and plug that in and it'll spit out the majority of my best box, my bow box have all been shot in those eight, nine, 10 out of 10 days. That's why HuntWise contacted me almost two years ago, and they wanted me to help develop the algorithm and change their HuntCast formula. So I've worked with them a lot. You guys get sick of hearing me talk about it, but that's a part of me. Just like RutCast that came out with on HuntWise, that's a part of me. I developed RutCast. I helped develop HuntCast. That's my algorithm. That's my formula for hunting the rut. That's why I developed the web class for hunting the rut. I hope you guys can take advantage of that, but it's breaking it down over 10 videos and hours of footage of how to navigate the rut. And that's how I'm successful every year. That's how I get my opportunities. It's because cold weather equals dead bucks. You can look at that seven to 10 days in advance. You can see those cold fronts coming and you can predict this long in advance. And a lot of people don't have the luxury like I do. You know, I've always slanted my job. I worked at a bank. I didn't have much competition for days off. Um, I was a real estate appraiser on my own for 10 years. 
and 11 years total. Uh, and I could do what I wanted as far as the days off. I still had to manipulate um, schedules and scheduling borrowers in that case when I went out and inspected properties. But I could always navigate around those best days, especially because you can see them a week out. And I've been doing that since the 90s. So you can see this a long ways out. I've always planned my career and where I've worked accordingly so I could take advantage of those back for 30 years so I could hunt that cold weather. And it's paid off handsomely and rewarded me with more success than I could ever imagine hunting whitetails and specific whitetail target bucks by navigating that cold weather. And you can see it a long time out. And even if you can't do that, you haven't navigated your career to where you could take this time off. A lot of times still people can look at a long weekend and say, I, I can take Monday or Friday off. You let your boss know the Monday before and you slant it towards the best weather days. You'll be rewarded. And on that warm day, maybe instead of going hunting, spend the time with the family, go to corn maze, go to a cider mill, whatever it is, spend some time with your friends, family, watch a game of football, knowing that you need to gear up and hunt a hardcore on those cold weather days that are just the next day or the next day after that. So really it's about prioritizing your time and that's why I came up with these weather formulas to begin with and hunting around the cold weather because I had limited time. I had limited time off at work. I could take a half day off when I wanted to, but I only had two weeks vacation back in those days. I had to spend time I wanted to spend time with my family and kids. That's why I left before they, or after they went to bed at night on a six, seven hour drive down to Wisconsin to hunt because I didn't want to miss that opportunity. Go at, they go after they went to bed. I leave at 10 o'clock. I get to the parking spot by the property used to lease at 4.30 in the morning, sleep for 20 minutes and head to a stand. That's the dedication I had for when those cold weather opportunities come through because it's paid off time and time again for me for decades. And that's why I'm a part of HuntWise and we push that into there. Number two, bucks don't like moving around when it's hot. I was a runner for a long time. You can't tell with my gut that I have right now, but I love mountain biking, running, you run up to 14 miles in the woods in the UP. Never ran a half marathon, but I did a lot in the woods. I'd run six miles, 10 miles, eight miles, 14 miles, 12 miles back and forth. I loved running in the cool of the morning. Even on a day that was gonna get 85, it might still be low 60s in the morning, high 50s. Great time to run. So my worst runs I can remember where you just dogged, it's hard to run, was 90 degrees. I'd literally leave water along the way so I could drink, stop, get a drink, maybe a Fig Newton and keep going on a 10 mile run. I don't like running in hot weather. Deer don't like running in hot weather either. That's why our water hole use picks up so much when deer are actually cruising and you get those cold weather temperatures the end of October, early November. They're hitting water holes when it's cold because they're moving so much and they're developing a thirst. You're not moving that much when it's hot. Doesn't matter if you're a runner, a biker, or you're a big old giant buck with a heavy winter coat sitting with all his fat reserves back on some knoll somewhere he doesn't want to move around a lot either when it's hot. And what you'll notice is even trail camera footage. You'll notice if you analyze pictures, and we have the luxury of owning a lot of trail cameras. It always had, you know, I manage my hunts to, to, to hunt cheap. You know, if I was leasing a property, it was $3,000, I'd lease it with two other people. One would be an addition during gun season. One would be my partner for all of it. So we'd have to eat kicking $1,000. I'm not saying $1,000 is cheap, but to hunt a $400,000 property, it was really cheap because I own land now. I own, I've owned land in the past. My first land and parcel I bought was 36 acres. It was on the Cass River in the Thumb area. It was a lot of money at the time. Didn't even own a home, but that was that priority of buying that land. It was also a good investment. We sold it a couple years later. So it's something that even as a young person, not making a lot of money, you know, making literally $12 an hour, $13 an hour, I made it a priority whether I worked, what I did, and I realized that when it was hot, we're not moving much, when it's cold, you get out on those deer, and I make that a priority. You can't miss out on that opportunity. Deer feed five times in a 24 hour period. That's critical, I say that all the time because it's so true and it's biologically true. The rhythmic pattern feeders like babies. So think about that. At night, they wanna hit their big, great food sources, kind of like our dinner time. The afternoon, they've been sitting for their first feeding early morning, their second feeding middle of the day. They've been sitting eating browse, acorns. They want to wash it all down with something high quality if they can. They want to go to their high quality food source. That's why they start showing up at that afternoon food source, whether it's an apple tree, whether it's a random stand of white oaks, acorns, red oak acorns, 
out in public land, a clear cut. They start showing up and feeding about an hour before dark. They've been sitting there just gnawing on roughage. Even acorns are included in that for a long time. They're thirsty, they want good food. And then at night, they live high in the hog. That's where they go to the neighbors. They feed on bushes, someone's garden, bird feeder, bait piles out on public land because they don't want to hit them during the daylight. They eat what they want all night long. That's why when it's a full moon, they're out there living high in the hog, eating. That's why that early morning feeding, they're back in their beds. Think of it this way, roller coaster of feeding. If they're feeding a lot here, they're not gonna feed as much here. If they're not feeding much there, they're gonna feed a little bit more here. That means they're gonna feed a little bit here. They might feed a lot here. The whole point is, is if they're feeding a lot, just like us, if we have a giant breakfast, we probably don't eat as much at lunch. Now when a big storm comes through and you have bad weather, you know, deer feeding five times in a 24 hour period, sometimes it's back in their bedding years. That's why you have to have browse in their bedding. You have to have those quality food sources. That's why you can't build a property if you're on private land just on browse alone. And working on the habitat, you have to have food plots because if your neighbor has food plots two miles away, you're not gonna see any deer. They have quality food sources just because you have browse. Browse isn't enough to drive a daily movement unless that's all there is. So if you're the only one in the area doing habitat improvement with your browse, great. However, if there's someone short distance away using food plots and they have a good feeding program, bait down in Kentucky, bait down in Ohio, some of those baiting states, you're not gonna see many deer no matter how great a bedding areas you have and how quality. They're gonna go search for that high quality food source and that's why clear cuts on public land, random stand at acorns. What I like about red oak acorns is that they last longer into the season. White oaks are earlier, the deer gobble them up, turkeys gobble them up and then they're gone. Whereas opposed to those red oak acorns, they drop later and they're around for longer. Great, you know, big flat of oak acorns that red oak that are in a remote area on public land are just awesome. Next to a clear cut, now you got these, you know, good combination of food. But when that bad weather moves through and they're feeding five times in a 24 hour period, that's what happens to those five feedings. On a big storm, you get rid of those five feedings. You get rid of it because there's so much stress in the woods. The bigger and badder the storm, the more they're gonna miss feeding opportunities. Think about it, if you have 35 mile an hour winds, if you have pounding, driving rain, snow, sleet, hail, thunderstorms, you have all that noise in the woods, they're not gonna get up and move very far. They don't want to, they're pinned down. They're not ranging out 200 yards to their afternoon feeding source. They're missing quality feedings at night because it's stressful, loud. So they're missing quality feedings. And in a big storm, they can miss seven, eight in a row. They're just standing up, browsing on something 10 feet away, probably just to shake the cold off. Imagine, they're miserable out there. Also, the stress, the noise, branches breaking, things dropping, they're stressed. So the burning energy of the deer are creatures of stress. 100 beats a minute, wolf cries 200 beats a minute, just like that. When you are stressed, you burn calories and energy. When the temperature's dropping, it goes from a high of 52 to a high of 27 in the morning on this Saturday coming up. They're going to burn energy to stay warm. So they're burning energy to stay warm because it's getting colder. They're burning energy because it's stressful and they're burning a lot of energy that's not being replaced because they're missing quality feeding opportunities. What happens then? When you have that bad weather, they're hungry. When they're hungry after that front moves through, they'll feed, they'll put the feed bag on, they'll feed heavy, and you can count on that. When they feed heavy, they move. They move during the daylight, they move at night. They need to replenish what was lost. They feed a little bit on the front side of that storm. A lot of times they can know this is coming. But it's pretty crazy that they'll know you could have the same barometric pressure. Big storms coming in, they know not to get caught out in those fields in a blizzard. Mild storms coming through, they know they can go out and feed in those fields before. So you really have to pay attention to that pre-front weather to know whether to go in or out based on the actual severity of that weather coming. Because a lot of times they're just sitting tight, they're not coming out of their bedding areas to feed out in the open and get trapped in a bad storm. They know the difference. They live out there 365. They know the difference with the amount of moisture in the air, the wind they can hear, the wind speeds, wind direction. They know what's coming, they really do. So bad weather creates opportunity and it revolves around cold fronts. And it doesn't matter if that cold front drops a temperature and you're down in Florida and the average daily high is 94 and now it's 78. That was a 16 degree temperature drop deer are going to move and whatever ushered in that 16 degree temperature drop, it's going to be severe and extreme. High winds, rain, whatever it might be, it's going to create change, that drop in temperature. So cold's all relative, but when you have that change, it could be in Wisconsin, we're in here on October 6th. October 6th, it's a high of 82. 
October 8th, it's a high of 57. Incredible early season time to get out in the woods. And it was based on the severity of that temperature drop coming through. And then when you get into late October, like right now, we're at Wednesday right now. Wednesday or Thursday? It is Wednesday. Yeah, get my days mixed up here. Vacation was too long, I guess. But, um, but when we get into Wisconsin, just a couple days later, or when we get into Saturday, you know, the morning low is going to go from 59 down to 27. And, and something about that I always, always uh, need to point out is that Tuesday's low is actually Wednesday morning's low. So if the daily high and low on Tuesday says a high of 64 and a low of 32, the 32 applies to the next morning, not that day. So always keep that in mind when watching the weather. That gets kind of confusing sometimes and rightfully so. But when you add hungry deer because a big front just went through, like we're gonna have this Friday and Saturday morning, and it's the pre-rut, which it is, October 20th, 21st, 22nd, in Wisconsin, you need to get out in the woods. And that'll apply when that cold front moves over a day later to Michigan. And then a day after that into Eastern New York, into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, that, that front will just sweep right across. So you can plan on it a couple days later, two and a half to three days later around the East Coast, you see a day later in Michigan from where we're at in eastern, southeast Minnesota and southwest Wisconsin, and you can watch that front go through. That's why when I'd make these weather predictions, I always just pick a random state and talk about it. You know, this city, Lansing, Michigan, just pick it up, look at the weather, break it down for 10 days like I used to do and put red, green, or yellow dots on it for when someone should actually go in the woods or maybe stay and wait for that better time. Cold weather deer hunting is critical. That's why people say, well, you, you hunt the moon. For one, the moon does not dictate when the rut will take place. That's been proven time and time and time again. Most of the people that predict that are selling some type of chart online or some type of moon-based prediction service for you just to suck your dollars out, unfortunately. That's why if you have a great moon day, but it's a high temperature day, don't go in the woods. On the other hand, if you have a bad moon day, but it's a cold temperature day and you just had a front occur and you're hunting that backside like this Friday morning, Saturday morning here, then you need to get out to the woods. Don't worry about the moon phase. Just go hunt the cold weather. That'll push bucks on their feet during daylight. Any experienced, long success hunter that can show that track record of success will tell you that. Look back. Pick a big buck that you saw moving early morning during the rut sometime. Start picking five or six bucks, even just sightings. Pick out those dates. Look at Weather Underground. It's a great historical site. You can actually pull up October, the month of October in 1968 or 1988 and look at those days. And if you can remember when you shot that buck, you can look back and see what happened. A lot of times you'll see a diminishing wind. You'll see a diminishing of conditions. You'll see a change in wind and certainly a temperature drop you look at those three variables, then you're going to find the majority of bucks are shot during that time. And those are as easy to predict as right now, seven to 10 days out. I can guarantee you going back to number one, the Friday and Saturday of this time period in October, a lot of bucks are gonna die this weekend because of that front. The warms up next week and then it goes down again towards the weekend and really pay attention to those weather, weather drops. They're gonna guide you to success and they'll guide you to success not only during the rut, but all season long, but boy, when you add in the rut and you add in bad weather and cold temperature drops, a lot of dead bucks are going to hit social media. Just watch it this weekend. Look past if you're watching this after this weekend and you can determine when deer are coming in the future. I want you to pay attention to this because it's very easy to see it's black and white when you get these cold temperatures. And you, Now you have to have bucks around. People say, well, the hunt wise told me to go hunt. But you didn't have bucks, you didn't have it on trail cameras, you don't have a good stand location, you don't have good habitat, you're not gonna have bucks to shoot. You have to have those there in the first place, good habitat on private land, you gotta find them on public land. And bottom line is if you have that cold weather, it's gonna guide you to success, and it'll guide you to success for the rest of your career, the rest of your time, the rest of your passion for hunting whitetails for the rest of your life. Enjoy it because it's an easy formula to predict and enjoyable. And I just want you guys to find success in the deer woods it's guided me to success for decades and it can guide you to success this fall right now. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your 
food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.